now beaming into Nerd FT Radio. This is Nerd FT Radio, where nerds full-time explorers of the metaverse, surfers of the blockchain, and not in our mom's basement. I'm your host, RSG, aka Road to Infinite, Marvel Snap, and I'm here with CryptoCryer, aka the Pro Bank Collapser. And we have a very special guest. We have Juan Perez, head of partnerships from ReNFT. Juan, how are you? Yo, what's up, everybody? Doing great today. It's been a much busier day than I anticipated, but excited to chat. Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. I know, Cryer, you mentioned that you and Juan, you guys met over in ETH Denver. That's That's where the partnership or the talking with one another, getting him on the show and everything like that. Now, Juan, I know that Cryer has talked a little bit about what uh, re-NFT is to me personally, sent me over some some stuff. So for the people that are listening into the podcast, I'll do like a brief little introduction into it. Obviously, you'll know way more than me. So go ahead and just right. dive into it right after I do it. So re-NFT is a multi-chain NFT rental protocol and platform that can be integrated into any project to enable collateral free in-house renting lending and reward share so from my understanding when i look at that is i have an nft i'm able to rent it out to people i can i would assume put a price on that and people rent it out and then when the rent's over i get some i get cap or i get eth i get whatever and then that person that rents it out can go to events can use it in a game all that stuff so am i on the right track that's exactly right. There is hey, some, okay. some things that we can dive deeper into in terms okay. of how that works, but that's exactly what the use case is intended for. Beautiful. I'm the how for, what is it called, Cryer? How to dummies or whatever. I'm the one that yeah. br- brings it down to the bare minimum. Rental for NFTs this- for dummies. Yes, that's what I'm going for. I'm for the I'm that. I'm the side of the show that's for the smooth brains crier. This is where he dives in for the actual stuff that we're going to talk about. Juan, yeah, introduce yourself. But- How long have you been with the company? What do you What did you guys do in East Denver? Just go on. We'll go ahead and talk a little bit more. Yo, for sure. Yo, what's up, everybody? My name's Juan. I've been working in blockchain gaming now for about two years. Started my own guild in Action Infinity actually during college. I wanted to pursue that. So when I was a senior. For my senior project, since I was an entrepreneurship major, I was like, yo, I'm going full into GameFi. I saw the opportunity, just digital assets make sense in gaming. And in general, in the history of gaming, a lot of the technology is adopted in gaming first either way. So I wanted to be a part of that movement. I ended up helping start a guild for a Netmarble FNC subsidiary. We raised 700,000 from Netmarble. We deployed about 250,000 of that in the market. Made a lot of connections with a lot of major guilds and in infrastructure players, games as well, before deciding to pivot onto into moving as into the head of partnership position I'm currently at with ReNFT. Rentals made sense to me as a part of the business model. And then also just looking into how technology transforms societies. Like again, gaming is where it all starts. And I think rentals are very exciting outside of gaming, but obviously inside of gaming, because that's where I think it'll get its start. But I think there's so many use cases for NFT rentals in the future that enable so many different things that I, I'm more than happy to dive into. Yeah, for sure. It's such a, again, it's just such a great ecosystem to have rentals in. It's already a easily transferable item. And when not everyone can afford a $60,000 ape to play Dookie Dash or whatever, we saw the exactly. delegations stuff like that. But I definitely think the next step of having that rental, going to these NFT events to, you want to experience it for the weekend. You don't want to spend 60 grand yet. Uh, let's rent it out get the ticket to go and then see what happens see if i actually like it see if it's actually worth it to me i think that's a great aspect and then the gaming side is just huge like the market there is astronomical people pay 1.5 million dollars for a csgo skin okay. if you want to you know you want to flex off to your friends or some shit you can just pay 10 grand to rent it for a week or some shit people yeah people are renting a csgo skins already there's third oh, yeah. party marketplaces where that's it's crazy. happening and Exactly. It's so crazy. Like, and then there's a middleman there, so it's that's a little risky. You got to trust somebody there, so it's a little tough. Yeah, you you got to trust the CS:GO admin that they're not going to steal your weapons. That's where it's gotten to. That's crazy, for sure. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm still <laughs> <Fast>. waiting. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the actual the ability for it. And again, like what Cry was saying before, when we had Dookie Dash going live, everyone was playing it. I was streaming it. Nate Digital, which is one of the co-founders of NRN, and one of 
Cryer's podcast host for NRP. The he actually allowed me. Yeah, he let all the poor people, including myself, to go ahead and jump into the account and take a hack at it. I didn't do that bad, but we definitely had ETAN, which was the best one out of the group on the sense of just going on accounts and like doing it for them. But it was super cool to just be the capability of Delegate.cash and being able to go ahead and delegate that access to these individuals. Of course, on the sense of actually renting it out and having a price for it and all these incredible things that we can hopefully do on the side of re-NFT, it's truly incredible what could happen. Again, like what Cryer was saying, there's assets in so many games I can think of just outside of the Web3 blockchain gaming from Call of Duty, Warzone, Fortnite, like all these other games where there's people that would love to have those skins, even if it was for rent, even if it was just for a little bit of time. So I can only imagine beyond the renting aspect, but truly like an, like that marketplace, if it's open sea, if it's whatever, like all these games need it. I'm just so excited. One of these days it'll finally happen. But yeah. Couldn't agree okay, so you're betting on the adjacents of a success for the gaming industry here. You selling everybody the shovels and the uh, the pitchforks and the pickaxes here. So, what so what are the, some things that you're really excited about just in general for NFT gaming and uh, why do you think it's going to grow? So, yeah, there's a couple of things in the general like gaming market. You were I heard this word yesterday listening to the Navic Gaming podcast. We're going through an ATT recession, which essentially is the Apple App Store. You can't collect as much data as you needed before or as you could before. So free to play games, this is how they were making their money. Like they're essentially getting cut off. Exactly. So like now free to play games are like, what other business model do we have so that we can make money? And I think that Web3 has so much promise in the actual benefit that it brings for players. And because it's so unexplored, look at what happened with in the past we had pay to play, right? When that was pretty much the only thing that we had. And then free to play started with Doom, free to play went off seas and then came back and then we had games like farmville and and what a game three birds that like just blew up and people didn't never thought that us a game like angry birds would blow up free to play games specifically so i think we're going through the same motions of changing business models adding new technology and changing the way that we ultimately are able to make money from these games and i think that providing the technology needed for an open source economy, a digital economy is blockchain. There's no other technology in this world that can provide that. And it's exciting to see these things arise because a game is a perfect breeding ground for that. It's happened so many times before with Second Life, EVE Online. Like a lot of these games, again, are games that I just lucked up in terms of our my research. Games that I played like Clash of Clans, like a Clash Royale. Like these are economies that my friends to this day still play because they have some sort of stake in the game and like this metaverse and to just be able to add on technology to that to like actually create value is an amazing thing to me and something that like gets me up in the morning and i think again starts with gaming and will lead to other mediums in the future for sure also just the thought process there too all these free-to-play games realistically they you get the Come play every day. We'll we give you all the free stuff. You get here, play this for two weeks. And then after that two week mark of you playing and then a lot of stuff and you get up to a sufficient level, then it's like, ah, hit them with the, hit them with the bill. It's, it really exactly. isn't free to play. It's like, you still have to put up that capital. If you want to be competitive in the game or you, you want to have a enjoyable experience, there's never going to be look at something like Diablo that came out that it's free to play, but like to actually be competitive, you have to spend like $700,000 to actually be the in the top tier people because that's how much people were spending. No, they pay to win. This whole idea and this whole model really does shift that away because companies, if you don't make good content and your game isn't very good, you're not going to get the volume that you were to make the money. But now the whole model idea is we get the little bit of cut in between everybody trading all their assets. I think that's a much better model, much more fair model because it's they don't keep up with the content their business model dies off and again it's and, and it's and they could also we have this game is super successful we are getting constant money like at something like look at runescape or world of warcraft or all these games that have been surviving for years and have super robust economies and how many transactions a day are on these games you know 
probably billions of like in-game currency trades, right? right? If that was actually like an ERC-20 and earning money, they just have oh. this constant revenue stream to then make new games and we don't need to prepay and buy our $60 game pre-purchase because we don't have enough capital to actually make it yet. So they have these like constant revenue streams that I think will benefit both the player and the company in general. I think it's going to be a much better model. Talking about uh, transactions in a game, I was reading an investment thesis yesterday for the Alliance Wild, Wildlife, Wildcard Alliance, Wildlife Wild Alliance. Cards. Wildcard and the CEO there and what he's built in the past. One of the games that he built reached at its peak, a hundred thousand transactions per second. That's crazy. For Just think sure. about it in like TPS, the terms for a game, free to play game. Yeah, for sure. It's really high. Totally agree with everything you're saying. I think there's a lot that's going to happen and a lot still in experimentation. And I think Wildcard is one of those experiments that I'm excited to see. Like they're matching their free to play with like a competitive esports scene. That's going to be where all the tokens lie, like not their actual game, which seems like a much more viable option to yeah. than to pay people to play sort of thing. They're actually, we, they're coming on the podcast coming up soon. Well, we actually got some whitelists for you guys. If you want to be Ooh. participating, we start giving those out. But we yeah, know. I think they're doing something really cool. The, he, the pat, the creator has made Age of Empires. I played the shit out of that game back in the day and like stuff with like words with friends and stuff like that. So yeah, there's definitely something where you're looking at a, someone who knows not only good strategy games, but knows like how to make good mobile games and has, yep. has the potential to do these things. So again, like it's, and we see people like, Gabriel coming in, he's super successful with Limit Break and all these other mobile games, has billions of dollars. Of, and well, I see, he's having a little meltdown right now on Twitter, but yeah, sure, go ahead. Whatever. I think he'll come out. I still think he'll come out on top. I don't, he, he has a model of uh, what's the meltdown? I didn't see what's going on. He's just, I don't know. He's just having a, it's either a midlife <laughs> crisis or he's just going to, <laughs> he's been inside too long. Like he hasn't touched some grass, but I don't know. He's just going off just like blocking everyone and going crazy. That's besides the boy. Keep on going. Thank like they just bought the free <laughs> NFT. They bought the free NFT.xyz. They then they purchased the domain for free NFT.com. He sees the route of it's not about these hundred thousand dollar JPEGs. It's about the the getting people in, reaching them with really low cost ten dollar, fifteen dollar NFTs is really that key market that you're looking for. People aren't going to be spending thousands of dollars on these things. And uh, and again, it comes in from a super huge background and, and mobile gaming and again i just see that the potential here is at the end of all this you got to make a fun game but that's where i think the biggest problem with the nft gaming right nowadays is just some of them aren't but most of them that i played we were there in, at east denver you know how many of those games were just like oh yeah this is so much fun for me it was maybe like two out of the like 30 40 games there was a lot right what were your thoughts on that one what were your favorite games that you then were? So I understand that games aren't fun. Premise, I agree. They're not. Yeah. I, as you like, it takes a lot of time to build a game, oh, like wow. an actually good game. I think the exciting things, like as you mentioned with Wild Hard, like that they're experimenting with a new way that, and now it's not going to be about, we need to get this price point as low as possible. Now it's just going to be about how can we just build a free to play game and then attach this web three component and a wild card situation? It's like literally detached from the game into like it's a whole other platform. And that is exciting because like, and people are experimenting with different ways of utilizing the tech for, instead of like, how can we get this down to like $5? Cause as a gamer, like I'm not going to pay more than 10 cents to try a game sort of thing, or maybe yeah. a dollar or something less, whatever it is, no one wants to pay, but if you can get intertwined into, into the narrative and you start becoming like esports, for example, like will be huge for Web3 gaming. Like, absolutely. Like, I think that's where most of the people, most of these free to play games that are turning Web3 will make most of their money, to be honest. And I don't think that we've Being understood that. Yeah, exactly. Cause and then you, have to capture you create that. a digital economy. And as you mentioned, like their business model is transaction fees. Like that's all that, that it is. Awesome. Obviously they have like, their upfront sale, et cetera, but dude. It, there's so many exciting things happening. It's just, it's still far away. Yesterday I tweeted out, we're not there yet. Like, geez, like game developers still hate the technology and it's not going to, it's going to get better, but so it's going to get a lot no, worse before it gets better. Yeah, tough. it's so clunky. I actually saw something really cool that uh, from Immutable X and one of the games that we saw that we were actually, I think we were talking about with Cathedral Games and the Bornless one, they have a new, mm -hmm. did you see that with the rendering skin thing? So they use open AI, so they're using the 
Unreal Engine, OpenAI, and Immutable X to instantly um, change the render of a gun, say like a skin. So you have they have Tommy Gun ready for Call of Duty style, right? And then they have they typed in amethyst rendered skin or something like that and then would, but it took the tommy gun and t- changed the skin into looking like rocks and purple yeah, amethyst cool. and then they're like and directly on the thing it said mint so you could literally sure. take that asset already rendered in in unreal and instantly produce it as a mintable object within a one workflow which looked incredible and there there's definitely we're on that like that so, tipping point of it's oh, almost yeah. there. Like we're getting that cool shit. We're getting the, the stuff that's coming down the pipeline and companies are going to be able to integrate these things with Unreal, especially with like MetaMask making the SDK and stuff like that too. Right. That's just we're almost, almost, there. almost there. Unreal is making, Unity is, I think it's Unity that's making the moves with their verified solutions. Like that will be huge. Everyone I talk to, it's, oh yeah, we built in Unity or right. Unreal. And it's, oh, that makes sense. They're like the big unlock really. And I think GDC will be big for them because they're going to realize like how many people actually need this tech. Again, going back to the idea of they're looking for something to latch onto because their previous business models aren't working anymore. For sure. I definitely agree. Now, Juan, let me ask you on the side of all of this, all NFT, actually, before we get into that, Cryer, you mentioned RuneScape before I did on this episode. Just wanted to let you know that. Uh Number two, Juan, let me ask you. So obviously we talk about gaming. We talk about that. We might not be there yet. We talk about all these great things and also not great things at the moment. Now, where does re-NFT kick into all of this? What are you able to provide for all these NFT games that are coming out? Obviously, like you said before, you are able to rent out those assets, all that good stuff. But what else or what are you guys looking for in the future of these partnerships with different games and different platforms, even probably even different blockchains and whatnot? So what's on that side for you guys? Of course, I think it's best to approach this with the solutions that we provide. So we have three different types of solutions that we could provide, which first is a traditional rental X amount per day for X amount of days. I think that's what people usually think about when they think about a rental. We also have a reward share rental, which is akin to the scholarship model for Axie Infinity, where someone can utilize an NFT asset without putting any sort of upfront cost. Again, essentially making the game free to play and splitting the rewards so both the non like the renter and the lender get more intertwined or at least invested into the ecosystem partnership it can be a partnership agreement almost that's awesome pretty much yeah and the third one would be our just like our customized rental solutions whatever you're looking for we're able to build out for free depending on what our priority is and we are able to create and modify our both our kind of flagship solutions or it's just something create totally something new we're talking with a lot of people that want to do like subscription-based models. As well. uh, so there's a lot of things that we're working on that would make sense. But I think to end it here, we also provide a lot of white-labeled services. So like games can put this rental infrastructure within their own game, which oh, is wow. like what most games want because it makes it a, a seamless like seat pro- One place. And more, exactly. And more importantly, because we're protocol first, platform second, like we want to be the, we don't want to be the open sea of rentals. Like we want to be the engine that powers all rental marketplaces in the future. So we're in talks with some kind of big game discoverability platforms to have them enable rentals within their own client. Then we become a source of not only adding the value of rentals, but now user acquisition because wherever where the users are at, because right now you think of NFTs as buy and sell, but in the future it'll be buy, sell, rent, et cetera, whatever loan. It's going to be crazy to, to see what else is enabled for these NFTs because it's a technology that is composable. Re-NFT ourselves, are, are, we promote ourselves as cross-composable protocol. So we've partnered with Unlocked to enable the NFT to be rented out. And at the same time, you can take a loan out on it sort of thing. So this financialization of assets, I think is going to start oh, wow. get, to get unlocked with rentals because imagine for a house. You bought a house and you can only buy and sell it. It doesn't make sense. And then now that you can rent out your house, you can actually value the loan you get out of your house a lot better because you actually have income coming in, which is how a lot of the big chains that I've been talking to are thinking about it currently, which is really interesting. Oh, that's yeah, that's, that's huge. Good. Uh, quick question on the other side. So obviously uh, on our side, and you guys, again, just came back from ETH Denver. So a lot of the use case for at least myself with going to Art Basel, with going to South by Southwest, going to NFT NYC, even Beacon. 
On the side of, again, we're talking all Web3 gaming. I would assume on the other side of it, I would hope so at least, that you guys also aim on the side of trying to get people to, again, if I have, let's say, a doodle, I can then, unfortunately, can't go to Miami that certain weekend, but there's an event. Being able to rent out that as well, because there are people that are going to be in Miami that week that want to be a part of whatever's going on. And maybe a doodle holder probably has like family members or friends, but they just can't get them in. And this service could provide a way for those friends to get in. Is that also something that you guys are looking for as well with these in real life events that are so crucial? And I feel like a lot of people, at least in the last few months, have forgotten these events are awesome. They just have to be in the right place at the right time. Maybe not NFT, but NYC. But all the other places, the South by Southwest, the Art Basel, is what we need to aim for. But is that something also that you guys are looking for as well? Yeah, most definitely. We're in talks with a lot of major conferences that have themselves their own NFTs to enable rentals with those NFTs. The thing for re-NFT is that we... It's not as simple as just saying, I'm going to rent an NFT out for you. If you were to do that, it's like you're sending your, your NFT to their wallet and then they could sell it. And then like, now you're fucked for us. Like oh, we're yeah. essentially escrowing, <laughs> we're escrowing the NFT in a smart contract. And then we're creating a GraphQL API to send to someone so that they can understand who the lender is and who the renter is. We need to be able to be in contact with the infrastructure of, for example, for our basil for doodles. Who is Doodles using to verify that you have the NFT to get you into the like token like proof? We, for, we would have yeah, to, there's like exactly. thousands of different ones. That's exactly it. And we have Heath to integrate with them before. With that, I felt like I had, to, I had to have, I don't even, it was so many. Like we mm -hmm. look and token proof and what leak like Lima or something like that. Like I had to sign up with like yeah. 40 different platforms to like get all these tickets. And I'm just like, come on up. guys. Like why? It's the interoperability. Get the shit together. Exactly. Yeah, it's like the infrastructure, right? It's building. And I think that's why it's been somewhat difficult for us. It's also not been a super big priority because the activity isn't there. But once we gain a good, I think as once we gain the majority market share for the gaming market, then we can start to expand and say our domain. Like now let's start looking at other use cases. Gaming just brings the most activity, which is ultimately what we need on our protocol. But we already are talking to a variety of different conferences and concerts as well who want rentals. And it's a natural next step, right? For digital ownership. Ownership means that you can do whatever you want with your product. And now these infrastructure protocol kind of plays are allowing you to do that in a, 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 a decentralized and trustless manner. That's definitely huge. And again, like you were talking about renting it out while also being able to loan it and stuff like that. I'm a huge proponent of NFT rentals, sorry, NFT loans. I use them. I've been using them for, I don't know, over a year now, but in March was like the first time I ever did one. I think that is a great idea too, because again, like you, you're, they're on loan, you're doing stuff. You're taking, you are taking a good amount of risk with these because NFTs go wildly price differences and volatility here. And now you're able, if you are able to rent it also, then you're getting, at least you're getting a little bit of income coming in from it to offset the risk that you're essentially putting on loan too. So just right. how you're talking about with houses, right? Like you have this house, you have the loan that you're outstanding. Now I have rental income coming in too. So that just makes it more secure in that sense that, oh, I don't have to pay $2,200 mortgage actually want to pay 200 bucks because I rent it out for 800 bucks a week, a month. You know, that, that, that's, if you're going to that with, to a bank, they're much more likely to, to give you that loan or something like that. Again, I think that is a huge selling point. And again, it, it just shows you the, how, you know, how liquid these assets are and how much composability they can provide is, is going to be huge for the future, for sure. For sure. Totally agree. But we, what, we're getting a little close to the end. We, we had 27 is minutes here. We, uh, what, let's get some nerd action going on here. What, what was your background? What, uh, RSG, you hit him with it. You're always you, doing it. All right, I got this. I got this. So number <laughs> one, like I said, I wasn't the one that mentioned it, but Cryer did RuneScape. That's what, the one for me that I actually, I'm still playing at the moment. Mm -hmm. I picked it up like the last month. You know what? I'm going a, I'm to a get the 99 wood cutting. But let me ask you, on the sense of video games, like what is that story for you? Uh, did you grow up playing video games? Did you play, let's say, Club Penguin? runescape was it the gamecube what game was it for you that when you think back you're like that's my game if i were to think about a game it would be call of duty i was 
Which so one? really hard wanting to be, it was Black Ops 2 that I started and really dove in. And that's when I really, that's when I got my first PlayStation 3, I believe. And it, yeah, <laughs> and I never really played a lot of games, to be honest, or, or so I think I, I didn't. Yeah, uh, my parents didn't really let me, right? Okay. It was, you know, you're wasting your time. I focused yeah. a lot on, on my like studies. So for example, like I feel like I, I had to, I, I'm a first generation low income coming from that background, a lot yeah. of grind needed to like get to where I'm at yeah. today. And I felt like awesome. games and also Going even out. sports, you know, it's not, and, and I, I really like prided myself in, in, in trying to get to a place of, again, just like stability. But now that I'm looking back, it's like games were the thing where like I had a lot of fun, like Club Penguin, I played Pop Ooh. Tropica, I, like I, I not Castle Crush, Castle Clans was my thing in middle school. They, I think the games are really special and that's something that I actually want to get into a lot more of now that I'm like older, I have a lot more like free time and it's like a new way to connect with people. It's like a different way. And so I'm actually really excited to, to jump back. And I think blockchain gaming will be that for me. Like not only now am I wasting time, but I'm actually creating equity within an ecosystem. What else can I ask? That that's the perfect picture for all of us. And again, I always say this, and I know Crack can attest to this as well. All these individuals in the, that are in the NFT space, good majority at least, grew up just like us playing those video games and understanding those economies. For me, again, RuneScape, having that general exchange economy and having all these things literally let myself up to success in the NFT game where it comes to buying and selling, what is valuable, what is not, what looks good, what doesn't, like right. all these things. Like without RuneScape, I'll get the I'll volume. Be, you got you got yeah. hose on that one, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. What was that Come story on. you had? Then you have a story where you got, you bought something. Oh no, no that was, uh, remember Tunes? Remember he said he, he traded like a bunch of, of assets for something that wasn't like, has no volume. So he had to like, he took, sold it for a huge loss, something like that. Yeah, yeah so it, like, it, you figure it out after a while. And again, I truly believe like these economies, like what you said, your parents were like, don't waste your time on that. That's pointless. What's going on? Go back to studying. But again, I'll say it right now, without those games that I played. economics. Like those are economics. Like I learned more in these Arts. games about buying, selling, and trading and all these crazy stuff than to be honest at school. And it was for, again, fun. And it's back to the gamification aspect of learning right. skills and learning these things, which is truly remarkable. But by the way, on my Call of Duty 4 was my game for me. I was like 11 years old playing with 20, 30 year olds, like game battles. I was sponsored by Turtle hey guys. Beach. Yeah, I had the voice, like I had the really squeaky <laughs> voice and everyone, all the guys on my team, they'd be like, yo, yo, don't make fun of him because I just whoop some ass. But again, I love nice. Call of Duty. I love I that. Call of Duty 4 is definitely the game for me on the call on that side of things. But uh, let me ask you one other question. And I always like to ask this. Imagine we've seen all these airdrops in the last like two years, uh, maybe even more than that. Uniswap, ENS, Blur, Looks Rare, all these things. And obviously what happens in these airdrops is you did a bunch of activity and you received the reward for it. So let me ask you, what's that game? And it could be called Black Ops 2. What's that game for you if they had an airdrop? Because you played so much of it that you'd be like set for life right now. I definitely think that it would be Clash of Clans. Like I was on that 24-7 okay. probably for, I don't know, like five years plus. I, I don't play anymore Marvel today. Snap. That's how I feel about Marvel Snap. You, Cryer, you probably know that. I've been playing that game way too much. <laughs> who, the hell, who is this guy? I don't even know What anymore. a great game. What a great <laughs> game. But uh, that game, again, on your side is phenomenal as well. I, I didn't play it as hardcore. I know a lot of my friends uh, grow, uh, growing up, they were heavy into it, but I played it a little. That was bit one that I was like, I tried it, and then it's, I see past your bullshit, like Supercell. I get all this. You get two minute cooldown, two minute cooldown, and then all of a sudden, eight hour cooldown. I'm like, oh, now I gotta buy the gem, man. I see what you're I doing here. It. I see what you. And did I actually played like a little bit of Boom Beach that way too, the same way, and they're made by the exact, essentially the, exactly the same game yeah. or whatever. And I was like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Just I don't, it, I don't like that. When I, I like to play a game that's enjoyable. But if you're changing the mechanics to make me buy something, I'd rather mm -hmm. pay up front. I'd rather give you like 10 bucks and be like, oh, I'm going to enjoy this game and have a good strategy game. But I mm -hmm. think that's a little bit of, I'm the older, I'm the older guy here. So I think that was probably a little bit more my, my, my realm or my generation. I don't care about, I don't mind paying your game, game, right? But a lot of people are like, right. I'm not paying for shit until I buy $20,000 worth of Fortnite skins. <laughs> <laughs> 20000 a couple hundred. But yeah, if it's Marvel, you got me. <laughs> the other thing I did want to mention, on the side of Web3 Gaming, you have said that you're diving into it. You're obviously on your side of re-NFT, everything like that. What's that one Web3 game at the moment? It could be even Axie Infinity. What's that game for you that you're like most excited for into the future? Like the one that I'm definitely going to play the crap out of it or just, again, super excited for? 
Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of games right now that have an exciting team or like actual idea behind it, either IP or actually new token, like a new tokenomics or a new business model that we haven't seen before. But I would like to say because of my Clash of Clans, it would have to be a Heroes of Mavia, like the Clash of Clans remake. I think I see a lot of potential just like being able to, being a part of that ecosystem already when I was young and knowing there's a lot of potential here in terms of people are actually going to and get involved in the, in the narrative of it all. So I think they're launching supposedly should be launching sometime this year at the end of this year, maybe 2026. Got it. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'll just be waiting, <laughs> man. We'll until wait that I actually had a tweet the other day. A lot of these NFT projects, at least the PFP, if it's cool cats, if it's doodles, if it's cool mans, like all these ones that, wow. Wonder Pals, like all the ones I'm thinking of that I invested in, at least they all said we want to be the Pokemon of blockchain. And I'm and I tweeted the other day, it looks like you ain't going to be the Pokemon of the blockchain because it looks like Pokemon's coming to the blockchain. So what's your proposition now? So let me ask you on the Clash of Clans side, what happens if they're like, you know what? Here we come. Then what happens? Would you go on the side of Clash of Clans, or are you looking for a new up and coming game? I know Cryer, your answer to this is the new and up and coming. You don't want the old to get into the mix with the new. So for you, Juan, what do you think? Would you go back to the, what you like or would you go into something new? Because I'll tell you right now, if Marvel came in like heavy into a game, I'm going the Marvel route. Fire's going to make fun of me every day. Yeah, it's a good question. I think that, I actually think that Web2 studios that try to pivot will just get crushed. I don't think that they understand. Ooh. I don't think that they understand the mechanics behind Web3 enough unless they like okay. truly pivot like crazy and yeah. spend time in R&D. I don't think that, I don't think that they can succeed from someone that's like a Web3 native, or at least has knowledge of what's happening in the industry. As of right now, I think that we're moving into a place where we're seeing a lot more custodial solutions that will onboard a lot of people and make it very seamless. For example, like Stardust, but even then, like they're not even ready for the thousands of transactions that are going to be coming in. And I know that for sure. It, it makes it difficult. And that's why I think like the people that are starting today, just like the same thing in the past with the internet, like the people before didn't learn how to adapt into the new environment. And so the people that were like internet native are the ones that are succeeding today. I think okay, Amazon yeah. sort of thing. So if there's that a supercell, sense. it's going to be a supercell for Web3 sort of thing. I, I have a pretty big conviction on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that pretty I, much. I agree with that take. Yeah, yeah, see there. You went the crier route. You went the crier route. It's fine. I'll be on my side. I'll be on my side. Yeah, that's right. They just, hey, they're just on. too used to making so much fucking money and they're not going to give up on that. I really do yeah. think that the, they won't let the whole idea of we'll get some money from, but they don't, I don't think they see the power of that volume transaction type. A little we'll see, but come on, we'll see. Want. I, I think they're not going to know until it happens. And by the time yeah. it happens, no, like, it'll oh, be too late. Yeah, then they're I gonna, feel then they're gonna I'll give you an there. example of what we saw with like Epic Games and Fortnite. Like they went the route of like free to play and then Call of Duty's like, we've been like, every single year 60 bucks. What do you mean free to play? So like, yeah. we gotta make a war zone now. What's going on? So they make war zone. To be honest, I have I have more fun on Fortnite, I'm gonna be honest with you. But war zone's mm. fun too. But uh, eh, that's a hard one. We'll get back to that on another episode. One other thing I did want to mention is we are wrapping up right now. Juan, hopefully you've been catching up on some shows or some movies lately. So this is typically where we try to talk about like the stuff that are going on right now. Number one, I have to ask Cryer, did you do your homework nope. and watch the last episode of The Last of I Us? Oh it. my <laughs> God. Juan, did you watch it? Nope. Oh, I right, say that I'm gonna... culturally deficient, so you're going to have a hard time. <laughs> all right, <doing> it's fine. <laughs> Just to let everyone else that watched it or about to watch it, phenomenal ending. They are now going into a season two, oh, and they say. have said that we're going to get multiple seasons as well. So it's not just a one and done right. type thing. What a great show. Number one. It's a fantastic show. Oh, it's fantastic. Number two, the la this brand new episode of Mandalorian that came out on the 15th. So today for us recording, I think it's probably one of my favorite Mandalorian episodes I've ever seen of the show. They did a great job today. And the other thing I did want to mention that this Thursday, so when you guys are listening tomorrow or today for you, Shazam 2 is out. Nice. I'm not sold on it to go. No. I might actually go by myself and just like go for it, but I'm not going to go to IMAX like I usually do. Me crier. I buy four you, or yeah, five IMAX yeah. six. I go out, all like, out. It's Tuesday, $5 oh ticket God. day. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. I probably go to the most expensive one and everything and probably steal the movie posters. I don't steal them. They give them to me for free. But Shazam 2 is out this Thursday, so 
if you are looking to do something, the reviews, the early reviews are saying that they're actually shocked how good it was and how funny it is. They're going into the funny side of Shazam, which I absolutely love. Shazam's one of my favorite yeah, DC time. characters on that side. Why, but, you, why um, aren't you going then if you're if it's got good I'm reviews? going. I just convinced myself. I yeah, just now, convinced yeah, myself. Thank yeah, you. For Thank three you. seconds Tomorrow. of convincing. <laughs> Listen, I'm not that hard of a guy to convince on things, all right? That's Peer pressure, picture. I fall through it. All right, but. Juan, thank you so much for stopping by for us. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Always welcome to come by to end off the show. Do you have anything, any socials you'd like to go ahead? If it's your Twitter, if it's re NFT socials as well, anything that you want to just shoot out, we'll also be putting this in the, in the podcast description as well. Cool. Yeah. I'll add on my Twitter and my LinkedIn connect me, connect with me. If you'd like to chat about the future of web three and doesn't have to be gaming specific. I think a long-term goal of mine is to get into, ultimately get into VC, specifically in Web3, specifically in Latin America. If there's anybody that fits in that, would love to chat as well. And then obviously for ReNFT, something that I'm super hyped about and is the priority of mine for now. And it gets me into what I want to go into. And again, I learned so much from these games. I learned from, so much from y'all. You can learn more about ReNFT at ReNFT.io. Fill out the partnerships, contact us, and you can be directly in contact with me or DM me on Twitter or LinkedIn. And, literally everywhere i'll make sure to respond i'm quite literally everywhere but thank you so much for having me on it's been a lot of fun oh, yeah. and i can't wait to see more where when you all both release some web3 gaming content and i can watch that because that's definitely what i find Ooh. myself wanting to do Ooh, I, we did a little I, bit we, a little we bit. had we did uh, what was that one we did uh, alluvium stuff we did uh, alluvium dookie that. dash we did. Well, I'm, listen yeah. i'm gonna be honest with you. i want to see you like both game. again <laughs> Oh, I want to see you both competing for a $500 reward or something put up by the fans. That Ooh. will happen one day, and that's entertaining. Like, <laughs> I we all know who's shrapnel. Yeah, we'll see about what Was that. it shrapnel? I don't know. I want to say, yeah, like shrapnel, like the entertainment factor there. Someone picks up a whole bunch of these tokens that is worth $100,000, and now if they die, they lose it all. This is like going to be yeah, going to get it, going to get entertaining. Are uh, oh, you talking about like Tyler's Doctor? It's like Squid Doctor, Game. Was it's literally like Squid Game. Extraction, yeah. Yeah. extraction games. Literally. Yeah, yeah, that was that's a I love that idea. Yeah. yeah we'll do that. We can we'll we do can. a combat. We'll I'll put some Wait I'll put some my NFTs up on the line here, RC. Right, hold up, hold up. <laughs> hold up. <laughs> I actually you know what I got some in the hidden. I got some in the hidden folder. Yeah, we, we got some hidden go garbage. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah. still got value. It's a little there. Maybe we, uh, <laughs> yeah, we can, we'll find out. But again, for I'll, I'll call one in. of my twelve Pepe's up for uh, for giveaways. So okay, for well, Ruby. That'd be good. How about that checks? One of your checks. Nah, nah, oh, not those. Checks, right. I just had to ask. I had to take my shot at here. For everyone listening in, thank you guys so much for another tuning into another episode of Nerd FT Radio. Juan, thank you so much for tuning in as or coming on the show as well. And for everyone listening, keep grabbing those bricks and build. That's all I got. I'm never going to end the show. Have a good rest of your day. Peace. Later, y'all.